stocks close mixed on Wall Street. The Dow corrects while the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq close at record highs as post-presidential election rally continues. Asian markets open largely higher following the bullish handover from Wall Street. The gift nifty is also suggesting slightly higher start for the Indian markets. Gold prices snap a 40 winning streak as the dollar strengthens. Crude remains range bound with Brent around the $72 a barrel mark. Sources tell CNBC TV 18 that the GST Council's group of ministers is likely to propose a new special rate of 35% on tobacco, tobacco products, and aerated drinks. The rate changes for about 150 items could be on the agenda at the next GST meet on the 21st of December, while a proposal to tax luxury goods at 28% is also likely to be tabled. The government decides that the fiscal year 2022-2023 will be the new base year for India's GDP data and other macro indicators. Furthermore, sources tell CNBC TV 18 that the base year revision is likely to come into effect from February 2026. Hello, good morning. You've tuned in to CNBC TV 18. You're po watching Power Breakfast and I'm Vinny Motiwala in the Mumbai News Centre. Let's look at what's the Asian market doing this morning. Not a bad handover that we have coming in from the US markets. So Asian markets as of now have opened up on the positive side. Taiwan index is up almost 1.4%. Hang Seng is holding on to gains of around one tenth to two tenths of a percent in trade. Other indexes also are trading on the positive side. So whether you look at Japan's Nikkei, that's holding on to gains of around 1.5%. We have ASX 200 managing to hold on to gains as well. And Shanghai, that's a beat subdued, muted day that is coming in but nothing to complain there we have a positive handover that's coming from the u.s market and uh, even in the asian markets we're seeing a positive start nifty implied open quite flattish as of now not much of an excitement but slight bit of a positive bias is what you're looking at it in terms for the nifty implied open seven points up is what we're seeing the nifty implied open at so yes that's how the asian market is opened up at and that's what we're expecting in terms of the indian markets a flattish start to a slightly bit positive bias is what one could be expecting but uh, let's talk about the U.S. markets because Wall Street mixed session with S&P 500 and Nasdaq, that is closing at record high levels, uh, hitting that fresh intraday high that we saw coming in. But S&P 500 gained a quarter of a percent and Nasdaq added 185 points. On the other hand, Dow Jones ended more than 100 points in the red. Uh, so yes, that is a decline that we saw coming in from the Dow Jones front. And that is despite the blue chip index that was one point topping the 45,000 level intraday. Now, investors will watch out for the October job opening uh, report that will be due today, which will provide some insight in the uh, strength of the labor market. And the main data will be on a Friday's November payroll report, so we'll be keeping an eye out on that. But let's also listen to some of these expert opinions that is coming in, especially in terms of the President-elect Trump's tariff proposal that will be there, his influence on Fed's policy and U.S. market outlook for 2025 and more. Listen in. On the day of the election, the, the tenure really jumped by almost 20 basis points. I, I think that was a, a shot across the bow saying to Trump, be careful of all the tax cuts. Now, I think that the market will certainly accept an extension of the 2017 tax cuts. But remember, Trump really promised a lot more. The, the deficit is a long-term problem. I don't think it's short-term, but if every single one of Trump's promises on tax cuts does take place, I think that's going to pressure the bond market. And I think Scott's nomination really was the start of, of, of taking that pressure off. President's getting involved in monetary policy is not new, as I pointed out in my remarks mm -hmm. or in my op that, that um, starting with, well, at least from uh, Harry Truman, uh, Johnson, Nixon, all had a lot of influence on the Fed's uh, chairman and on the FOMC, and especially in a time when they wanted interest rates not to be increased. That's not going to change with Trump at all. And the other thing to remember is you have, you have really a committee that has full discretion over monetary policy. So one of the most important things to our economic system, money and interest rates, 
are controlled uh, at the discretion of a policy body, that means it is going to be subject to political pressure regardless of who is president. So uh, it, that'll be the case with Trump. Uh, and should they find themselves in a situation where they need to raise interest rates, Trump will put a lot of pressure on them not to do so, given his other plans. In the vast majority of the states of the world, which includes massive economic dispersion, which includes geopolitics, which includes uncertain politics, the U.S. outperforms. It outperforms economically, and it will continue to attract significant capital from the rest of the world. So while it is a very uncertain outlook, the one thing that is certain is that the U.S. outperforms. What is not clear is at what level of growth and what level of inflation. Those are the two issues that are in play. But in relative terms, I call it the good, the bad, and the ugly of the global economy. The good is the U.S., the bad is China, and the ugly is Europe. Okay, that's how we're looking at in terms of the global market update. But how is that all going to be affecting our Indian markets? We do have a team of research also joining you with us this morning. Uh, good morning, Abhishek, uh, as well as Sudarshan. And firstly, let me start with the market uh, setup that we're looking at. Now, Nifty yesterday saw a consecutive uh, second day of gain that came in for the Nifty. Second half of the trading session was better. Nifty closed up six tenths of a percent in trade. What was outperforming yesterday also was the broader market. So that was an interesting move that we can saw coming in in the nifty mid and small cap now a second half surely a good recovery that we saw coming in look at the stocks like whether you look at reliance industries emphasis we have ultra tech cement m m and hdfc bank which are among the top contributors that came in for the nifty 50 fii's you know what we've seen coming is is that in the middle last week we saw some fii buy coming in and then again fii's have been selling but not in terms of the intensity that we've seen in the last month so seems like a bit of a intensity is reducing of the fii selling as of now yesterday's fii selling was at 238 crores dii's continue to buy 3589 crores is what the fii uh, dii buy is coming at what are we watching out for today in terms of the markets we have swiggy's q2 numbers that will be coming out so this is the first time uh, they're reporting earnings post the listing keep an eye on that we we have the RBI MPC meet that is later on this week. So more in terms of that, you know, what is the decision coming in? Any experts' opinions on that? That is something that we're watching out for. And FIIs, how are they going to be performing, selling, buying? What's happening on that front? That continues to be a key focus area with the geopolitical tensions. But yes, that's the market setup looking like. Nifty implied open, indicating a muted start to a slightly bit positive bias for the Indian markets. But over to you, Abhishek. What are the important stocks that we are keeping on our radar today? Uh, well, to begin with, uh, uh, Sipla promoters will be selling about 1.72 percent stake in the company via block deal today. Uh, Poly Metplast Machines uh, over there, the CEO has resigned, so they have appointed Manan Joshi as the new CEO of the firm from uh, 2nd of December. Uh, Protein e Tech Techbags has uh, backed uh, an order of about 161 crore from CERSAI, which is Central uh, Registry of Securitization, Asset Reconstruction, and Security Interest of India. Now, so Sources do tell us that Torrent Power will launch a QIP of rupees 3,500 crore. The floor price has been set at about 1,555.75 per share. Uh, Nazara Tech, the company, will acquire 60% equity of Funky Monkeys for uh, you know rupees 44 crores nearly, and they will also infuse primary funds of up to 64 crore into Norwin Gaming uh, via OCPS, that is uh, optionally convertible preference shares. Now sources do tell us that Indigen CA. Uh, down likely to sell about 2.9 percent stake in the company via block deal the flow price is at 615 per share okay abhishek thank you so much uh, for highlighting the important stocks that will be in focus today but uh, lastly we have sudarshan here to tell us what are the important fnoqs to watch out for in trade today good morning sudarshan morning Vinny. so talking about yesterday's session it was a broad based gains uh, led by heavyweights like hdfc bank reliance industries but broader markets had outperformed with mid cap index gaining almost one percent against nifty's gain of 0 0.5 percent for today gift nifty is indicating a flat start talking about the flows fis have sold 238 co while di's have bought more than rupees 3500 co but you have to factor in two block deals of sipla and home first finance that had happened yesterday now coming to Derivative side, 
FIs have net FIs were net sellers and figure was almost paid 600 crore and they have added long contracts of more than 4,400 but at the same time they have also added short contracts of almost 14,000. Now long ex exposure by FIs now stand at 32.6 percent for the client side long exposure is at 64 percent. On the option front 24,400 call has seen addition of almost 19 lakh shares with 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 premium at almost 107 and 24,000 put has seen addition of almost 46 lakh shares and premium here is almost 60. And with this important levels for Nifty support is now seen at 24,100 and resistance is now at 24,350. Two stocks that will be in focus, one is RBL Bank that has entered FNO band and second is Reliance Industries which has closed at very important level yesterday that is 1310. Okay, thank you so much, Darshan, for highlighting that for us. And on that note, we're going to submit a very short break. Uh, but after the break, we'll tell you what uh, sources are telling CNBC TV 18 that JSC Council's group of ministers is likely to propose a new special rate on tobacco and aerated drinks. More on this story on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. And on to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive that we have for you all now. So also tell CNBC TV 18 that the group of ministers that has been set up by the GSC Council has proposed rate changes for 148 items, including a special rate on tobacco and aerated drinks. Timsi is joining in with us to give us more details on that. Good morning, Timsi. What's the latest that you're picking up here? Well, that's right. As you said, the sources are indicating to us that the group of ministers on rate rationalization, which was set up by the GST Council, it has finalized its report, which is likely to be submitted for the Council's consideration in the upcoming meeting on 21st December. Now, what is the proposals that they have likely prepared? Firstly, to introduce a new rate, a special rate of 35%, in the existing structure of GST where the four slabs will continue and a special rate of 35% should be introduced, which will be levied only on special items such as tobacco and tobacco products and aerated drinks. Now, the proposal is that this special rate will help the council and the country make up for the revenue loss that will occur due to the rate rationalization which will be done on as many as over 148 items. Some of the items where rates are likely to get reduced is, firstly, as we know, there's another panel which has been made on insurance premium where health insurance premium and life insurance premium is likely to see some rationalization of rates. The proposal of that particular panel is to reduce rates to a complete zero from the existing 18% on pure term life insurance premium. For senior citizens, the panel has proposed to again exempt GST of 18% on health insurance premium. But for non-senior citizens, the proposal made by the panel is to reduce GST from 18% to 5% 
or non-senior citizens category where the gap the gap of uh, cover for health right. insurance is above 5 lakh rupees per annum but for below 5 lakh rupees again mm-hmm. over there they say that there should be an exemption of 18% gst apart from that mm-hmm. luxury items is right is the category where they want a hike in gst say mm-hmm. for example luxury handbags luxury yeah. watches it should be okay Okay, thank you so much uh, for that, Tim C. But uh, let's move on. And the government has said that the fiscal year 2022-2023 will be a new base year for India's GDP data and other macro indicators. Furthermore, also tells CNBC TV18 that uh, the base year revision is likely to come into effect from uh, Feb 2026. Sapna Das is joining us with us to give us more details on that. Sapna. Well, of course, first thing, it's official now that 2223 is going to be used as the new base here for the calculation of all those important economic indices. Having said that, that we are given to understand from sources that most likely the new GDP base here uh, for the new GDP series is going to roll out uh, from the last quarter of FR26, which basically means that uh, the GDP print that comes in the month of February, uh, which carries the Q3 estimates of a particular financial year, also the second advance estimate of that financial year and the revised estimates of the previous years so most likely all of that is going to be based on the new base year that's one second uh, similarly given to understand for the inflation print as well uh, most likely from february fr26 onwards it's going to be based on the new cpi basket as well as a new base year so to speak last but not the least similarly for iip we are given to understand that it 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 is going to be rolled out uh, from march fr26 and uh, if the government is able to kind of advance the release calendar slightly that's what is being indicated currently then uh, the iip data for the uh, month of feb is likely to be released before march fr26 actually closes now these are the timelines the government is seriously mulling on we'll have to wait and watch and see uh, what the official announcement looks like which is some time away but this is what we are clearly given to understand for now okay thank you so much uh, for that sapna but on that note we're going to sip into a very short break after the break we'll get to what's happening in the world of commodities with manisha so don't go anywhere Thanks for staying tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. And like promised, we have Manisha Gupta who's here to tell us what's happening in the world of commodities this morning. Good morning, Manisha. What are you watching out for this morning? Well, I'm looking at metals, Vinny, and I'm starting with gold right now because the strength in US dollar yet again is putting pressure on many of these metals. The gold price is not able to hold its higher levels. Also, uh, you know, with US pledging tariffs on China, Canada, Mexico, even BRICS now, that has strengthened the US dollar. The one thing that the markets will watch out now is uh, on what China does because there are two important uh, key political meetings in December in China and then you have the US Fed rate meeting as well before you call it curtains down on 2024. So what happens there will define on how we step into 2025 when it comes to gold. Well, for metals as well, it has been mixed. Copper prices are trading off its two-week lows. Uh, the strong China PMI data clearly has been a supportive factor for many of these industrial commodities. But here as well, the strong U.S. dollar is keeping the prices in check. The best of performance in last one week in this year comes in from zinc, where prices gained 5% in the previous week. And we have seen the zinc prices hold around 3100 The production downgrades, disruptions is what is supporting prices for zinc. Okay, Manisha, thank you so much uh, for that update there on the front of commodities. But moving on to some national updates, a heavy flooding triggered by the cyclone Fengal in Tamil Nadu continues to cause massive destruction across the state. The cyclone has resulted in extremely heavy rainfall in the coastal regions of Tamil Nadu, North Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry. Several affected districts across the state have announced holidays for schools, colleges and government institutions. The MET department confirmed that the depression in the cyclonic storm has weakened and is likely moving away from Tamil Nadu. The department also warned that Karnataka and Kerala could too expect rains in the coming days. Rescue operations are still underway. 
And with that, we are absolutely out of time on this edition of Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Thank you so much for tuning in. But don't go anywhere. Your Bazaar Monocle up next.